Hi, I'm Ben Shapiro, and this is Reality Check. President Obama is fond of saying he's responsible for one of the greatest jobs recoveries in all of human history. Never mind the fact that less Americans are in the active workforce as a percentage than at any time in three decades. Never mind, his recovery has been the weakest jobs recovery of the century. He says the recovery is real, it's steady, it's happening. He says America is experiencing the longest period of uninterrupted growth in American history. Okay, so let's assume that we're creating massive numbers of new jobs. Is Obama responsible for those jobs? In a word, no. It turns out that Obama's recovery hasn't been his recovery at all. It's been those evil oil and gas companies. As Stephen Moore of the Heritage Foundation points out, quote, from 2008 to 2013, the oil and gas industry created more jobs on net than all other industries combined. There's a reason the fastest growing job state over the past several years has been North Dakota, where the oil and gas boom is centered, thanks to the Bakken formation. And in Texas, the oil and gas industry growth has powered the state, thanks to the Eagle Ford and the Permian and Haynesville formations. As this chart from the U.S. Energy Information Administration shows, oil and gas industry employment has far outpaced job growth in any other area of the economy. And by the way, the wages in the oil and gas industry, they blow away wages in other industries. The average wages of oil and natural gas production jobs were $108,000 in 2013, double that of other industries. So why the boom? Well, thanks to the process known as fracking, in which water, chemicals, and sand are shot at shale formations unlocking natural gas, production has skyrocketed, even without creating new oil and natural gas rigs. At the start of 2012, America had about 1,300 oil and natural gas rigs and produced the equivalent of just under 8 million barrels of oil per day. Today, America still has 1,300 oil and natural gas rigs, and we produce the equivalent of 12 million barrels of oil per day. The United States is now the biggest energy producer on the planet. Of course, President Obama takes credit for that. In July, Obama bragged, quote, we're more energy independent. The world's number one oil and gas producer is not Russia. It's not Saudi Arabia. It's the USA. Throughout his 2012 campaign, President Obama bragged about his increase in oil and gas production. But that's in spite of him, not because of him. As we've seen, oil and gas production has become incredibly efficient, far more efficient than it was when President Obama took office. The real question is whether Obama has thrown roadblocks in the way of oil and gas progress. According to CNN, quote, during the last three fiscal years totally under Bush, there were 9,661 new leases granted for federal lands. For the three years 2009 to 2012 under Obama, there were 5,568 such new leases. That's a 42.4% decrease in new leases. According to the Institute for Energy Research, most of the drilling on federal lands actually takes place in the Gulf of Mexico. The Obama administration cut such drilling tremendously in 2011 and 2012. From 2009 to 2014, oil production on federal lands dropped 6%, natural gas production dropped 28%. By contrast, since 2009, oil production on non-federal land skyrocketed 61%, natural gas production jumped 33%. So it turns out that President Obama's recovery has been riding on the backs of just the folks he despises those evil frackers who power the engine of America's economy. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel or click here to give a quick donation.